بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ان السبت ناخذ من نواقد الاسلام امام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى said <تصفيق> السابع السحر ومنه الصرف والعطف فمن فعله او رضي به كفر والدليل قوله تعالى وما يعلماني من احد حتى يقولا انما نحن فتنة فلا تكفر The seventh ناخذ من نواقد الاسلام احبتي في الله is involving magic and considering it permissible to practice and spread ways that may sway man from the good things that he likes like using ma magic to uh, sow discord between a man and his wife or reduce man to do what he dislikes or is bad for him these ways of magic are satanic and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Suleiman did not disbelieve, but the devils disbelieved, teaching men magic and such things that came down at Babylon to the two angels. Put a com put coma at, uh, <coughs> ha uh, the two angels, Harut and Marut, but neither of these two angels taught anyone such things till they had said, We are only for trial, so believe disbelieve not by learning the magic from us. So this shows us that magic is uh, disbelief. And today, unfortunately, we see many people, there's a, a rise in, this, uh, in these movements. We see many people who seek help from the so-called fortune tellers. Uh, they believe that these tellers know what will happen. And this is kufr, to, to, to believe that these people know the unseen. The Prophet ﷺ warned that whoever goes to a priest, a soothsayer, or a fortune teller and believes him and what he says has committed kufr and denied what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So whoever goes to these people who claims to tell the future or tell the fortune or tell your lifespan or what have you, horoscopes, all of these things, then this is a type of disbelief that you have to beware by any and all means. A believer puts their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the believer avoids this and that I illustrates for us that this that magic is uh, disbelief and the Fuqaha have agreeance of on this uh, with some details I believe it was Imam Shafi'i or Imam Malik rahimahullah uh, jami'an that mentioned a particular type of magic being that which uh, I believe it is either kufr or takes the fold of, a person out of the fold of Islam, and I don't recall the, the details right off hand, but it illustrates for us the importance of avoiding <clears throat> any and all forms of, of, of shirk, but in all forms of magic. And I want to make a quick 10B uh, regarding this issue. There was a particular da'i uh, person who calls to Islam that is even known as being a talib of ilm, a student of knowledge, but however this individual was doing magic tricks on the, on the internet, on the YouTube, pulling a rabbit out of the hat and doing things like this. This, <coughs> if you put the best spin on it, this is not something that a student should be doing, a person of religion and a person who uh, is representing Islam should not be playing on the on the fence like that on the borderline whether you try to defend those actions and say well it wasn't actually magic it's just a type of tricks or what have you whatever the case may be and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that is very dangerous and serious and those kind of doors should be cut off especially for the people who are people representing the deen and represent representatives of the, uh, the Muslim community, <clears throat> that they should know better and cut off and close those doors. 
And so it's very serious uh, that we avoid any and all forms of magic. And another, uh, a true situation, I used to sell uh, body oils and, and so forth and perfumes, fragrances uh, in the mall. And I recall uh, a woman, she came to me and she was a, a Wiccan, which is a pagan, a revival of a pagan uh, re religion. And that's what they even refer to themselves as pagan. They take pride in, in saying, hey, we're Mushrik. And it's becoming a, a popular and growing trend in the West because it's, it's trendy. And so people are looking for other alternatives, I guess, to Christianity and, and, and other faiths. And so they are taking some of the most severe shook. So she came to my, my stand and she said, uh, I want a potion. You know, I want something that's going to basically almost, if I recall, it was exactly like uh, uh, was warned against in this treatise that she wanted something that was going to cause two people to, to love one another or something like a love potion or something. And I said, you know, I'm Muslim. I said, we don't have potions. We don't believe in potions. These aren't potions. But this is something that don't let you smell good. Maybe it'll make you happy that you enjoy the smell and fragrance, but it won't do anything else for you. So it shows you that the people, they put their trust in many worldly things and worldly objects. And they do it to the extent of shirk, shirk al-akbar. And it's a very serious and dangerous thing. <clears throat> and the magician is one who spreads a type of evil and a deception and the Muslim must avoid these types of practices and these types of activity by any and all means and especially those fortune tellers and soothsayers and, and people who read the crystal balls and so forth avoid all of those in seances and seances or what have you and all of those the tarot, tarot cards and the Ouija boards all these things were popular when I was a young uh, young man or a young teenager that people used to get together and you know have these gatherings and try to tap into the unseen and if ever they did achieve anything from it it was only from the devils the shaitan that maybe the shaitan shayateen or the jinn had stolen one secret about the unseen with 99 lies and this is the case so alhamdulillah avoid these types of activities by any and all means. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.